Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Here is your host code. So if you place a purchase with me, um, use this host code and this is how I get you free items. If your order is above $150, don't worry about the host code. You'll still be put in a drawing for free items. Now our next paper pumpkin comes in on June 10th. So I'm sorry. You have to order by June 10th for the next paper pumpkin. And um, it's called the Welcome Inn. It coordinates with our Countryside Inn suite. That's the one with that really pretty blue paper and those octagon shapes. Yep. Um, and so um, it'll have a die set too that you can order that goes with a paper pumpkin kit. It's just this little small die one and that's only while supplies last. So if you are already planning on getting the kit and you want the dice, order that too. Um, if you have any problems, let me know. Um, so today I'm going to express my love for the new ink colors. I know that they're not a favorite of everyone, but man, I've been playing with them and I love them. And I even love wild wheat. So that's why I used this grid paper today because it has the wild wheat on it and I think you're going to learn to like it as an accent color. It's a very good accent color. So my one of my f new favorite ink combination of colors is um, Boho Blue Misty Moonlight and Wild Wheat together. Those colors together look so good. They're, they're kind of good man colors too. Um, masculine colors. Um, so those are beautiful and we're going to be using those today. We have three cards. Um, one on the easy side, second a little more complicated, and third, I hope I don't screw up in front of you. <laughs> Again, I'm wearing color straight nails, some chipped because they're doing a lot of stuff today, but um, my friends Wendy Hoover and Mary Burr sell these so look either one of them up if you want really cool nails all right now we're going to look through our one and only annual catalog the only other thing to know is june 10th i am having my um uh, retired stamp sale that's where i get out all my retired stamp sets all the dies and i have a sale and i posted the deals um the stamp sets are, uh, you know, buy a few, get one free. Um, the dies, the more sets that you buy, the more money you get off. Um, and um, there'll be another crafter joining with me who will have retired crafting stuff. Um, so should have enough stuff for everyone who wants to shop. And then you can always place an order with me in the new catalog if you wanted to at that time. So we are going to be using this wonderful suite on page 15. Um, you may hear my wonderful sister and my fabulous nephew in the background because they're visiting. And um, we were able to craft today. We made a lot of cards, some which I'll show you next week. Um, I did post some... Um, uh, random videos of just um, items that I got. Um, one I did show using the metallic um, enamel effects and then with the new decorative mask and I made this card. Um, so maybe I'll show you how to make that card next week. Isn't that cool? I just made that one today. I thought it was pretty cool. So that's using the Earth and Elegance card set. So I have two of those cards for next week if you want <laughs> if you wanted to purchase those so that you could play along. Um, why can't you make yourself make some cards? Just not in the mood, get a lot of stuff to do. It's hard. But you know what? Sometimes just sitting yeah, that mask is pretty, right? Yeah. I love it. There's so many things you could do with that. I can't wait till Christmas time because if you can imagine, you can do snowflakes like that and everything else. So anyway, but tonight we're using the beautiful balloons bundle, the dies. There's a fabulous die that, that makes fringe. Um, so this is page 15, makes this fringe. Um, using this really pretty paper, I don't think the um, 
catalog does it justice how pretty this paper is. And then we're going to be using some of this really nice um, acetate. It's um, called Gold Celebrations Specialty Designer Paper. But if you notice gold, um, when they print that on the acetate, the opposite is always going to be silver, and we're going to be using the silver side. All right. So that's our more complex card is going to be this card. Um, we are going to be using just a saying from one of my favorite sets. You guys know this is one of my favorite sets. So I'm going to use the So Happy For You from that. Um, the color and contour, especially the dyes that coordinate are my, some of my favorite dyes. That's on page 25. Um, I think that's probably my most used <laughs> on any of my videos. And then we're going to use this two-tone flora um, set on page 34. This is just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'll show you some of the flowers I made with it. But if you just look over on the next page, that's this set here. Look how pretty those flowers are. I love, love that set. So two-tone flora we're using. Then we're going to be using a new set. Don't you love the sound of laughter in the background? Um, new set, Wonderful Thoughts Bundle, because we're going to do a graduation card. Congratulations. And then it has you've accomplished, or you've come so far and accomplished so much. So um, that's a great for great set for different things, but that's great for graduation. Um, which occasionally you need one. And then we're going to use this really cute bird's eye view set. Um, very cute. Love the set. You can make the birds wear different glasses, even a monocle. Um, and then we're going to go to page 133. On this page, we're using two things. We're going to be using the In Color Designer Series Paper assortment. We're doing the 2023 2025, the new in colors. Um, then we're going to be using the gold celebrations. I've already said that. So that's on page 133. On page 140, we are going to be using the festive pearls. So this one is really was really initially billed as soft succulent, but it looks like Lost Lagoon, so I'm sure that's what it's going to be billed as. We're going to be using that one. We're using anything else. We're not using anything on that one. And not any. Oh. And then we're going to be using, over on page 141, we are going to be using these pastel adhesive sequins. They come in gold, petal pink, and balmy blue. I think that's my nephew playing a game. <laughs> I think he might have gotten beat or something. Sounds like it. <laughs> and so now um, on this page, on page 143, we're going to be using the textured ribbon in the Moody Mauve. And then, um, and then we're going to be using... <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, this one. The Lemon Lime Twist. Sorry. Uh, the Lemon Lime Twist um, on page 144 in the Ribbon Duo Combo Pack. And then, and then we're going to use our Nested Essential Dies. On page 165, these are new ones. We're going to be using these rounded corner um, rectangles. Okay, good. I hope you can hear me okay. Everything good? All right. So the first one I kind of put a video, I mean, I already put a picture of. And it's a nice simple one, but I thought the color combo was just so cute. So yes, I'm using the... Wild wheat, like I said, I actually really like this color. I know people have called it different names, um, but I think it's nice to have a variety of colors that you can use. And then we're going to, so I cut this at a five and a half and scored it four and a quarter for my base. 
So we're going to be using it portrait style rather than landscape style. And then um, I took a piece of that designer series paper from that 6x6 six six pack. And this is in the boho blue. The other side is that, so and we're using that side. Sometimes these prints are just pretty. And then we're going to use the wild wheat ribbon. Um, so on the same page as the mauve ribbon. And we're just going to cut a piece this big. Right? And then we're just going to wrap it around how we normally do. I like to start out with a simple card. <laughs> you know, I think everyone likes to make different types of cards. Some people like simple cards. Some people more, like more intricate cards. Some people are looking for new techniques. Some people are just looking for ideas or whether or not they like the set and like to see the set used in different ways. This is a great set um, to use in different ways. These birds could be used for birthdays, could be used for retirement, could be used in just hello cards, just a note cards, anything like that. Oh, I just think that's so pretty, these two colors together. All right, now what I did to save time is I already cut out um, from that die, um, from that die set I just showed you, um, the stitched and the edges are already rounded. Isn't that nice? It's a nice little triangle. I like these new dies. And now we're going to stamp. So we're going to be coloring with our blend. So we're going to stamp in Memento. And we're going to stamp with first the books. Okay. And you're going to get those nice and inked up. Okay. And I'm going to put those right down towards the bottom. Right. Good. And let the ink soak in, pull up, and then we have our book pile. And now we have our bird, and I chose one that's sitting like this, but you could have um, had one facing you. So we're going to have this one, and I'm just having them stand on the books like that. Good. And see, and now we're going to make them into that, right? <laughs> and I'll show you how to do that. And yes, this is not a bird that you would find in real life, so I didn't color it as a real life color. Um, and then I decided on these cute round glasses, but you could decide on any glasses you want. Aren't they cute? <laughs> there's a, you know, there's a there's a couple different pairs and a monocle. <laughs> and then. We're quickly going to color these and with these stamp and blend markers that we do have in all the new ink colors. The coloring goes really quick. So I used just the light wild wheat and the light boho blue. And I'm just going to put a little beak on them. All right. And then I just kind of did this area here. Yep. So cute, isn't he cute? <laughs> Can you hear the snorting and the laughing in the back? I love that sound. Hi, Karen. We're using our blends. And so in order to make his face stand out, I only did a little bit around the edges, you know. And then I did some around here. And so I'm using the light boho blue. And this one was a little different than the other one. But see how quick this coloring goes together. Yep. And you just kind of blend. And then I did the top book boho. And you can use darker bohos or lighter bohos, but I decided to keep it fairly simple with the boho. Isn't this little bird cute? You could do Christmas cards with this one. You could do birthdays. You could do, but I thought it would be a great graduation card. All right, so there we got him in there. And then I took this wild wheat, which again, 
I like. I think is a great new addition to the color scheme. I know a lot of people are questioning the new colors, but I love them. I think they're great. And then we'll show you how they work together. And you'll like them or not like them, and that's fine. And you'll buy the ones you like, and you won't buy the ones you won't, and that's okay too. And so I left them like that. Isn't that cute? So then we bring back a card, and we're just going to hear that, like that. Um, we can put some dimensionals on him. Got my dimensionals here. Let's put some dimensionals on him, right? Yeah. Good. I hope you all had a nice day. It was a great day to stamp because it's here because it rained all day. And so I made some fun cards with my sister. And I'm going to put him right there. Isn't that cute? Just just coordinating those two colors. And you could have done any colors, right? You could have done teal. You could have done whatever. But I, I loved this wild wheat. So then I took the set. <laughs> it, and it's a newer set. It's a really cool set. So let me pull it out for you. Um, it's called Wonderful Thoughts. And it has different sayings that kind of pair together. But not only that, it has great dyes that you can use for all these, like this big one. So these will cut out all your words, but it also has some florals in there, has some hearts, some little accent dyes that you can use that are not just the words. Um, but I liked the words for the graduation card. So I already stamped and cut out with the dies. Congratulations. And I stamped it in the wild wheat. And you've come so far and accomplished so much. So I put congratulations on the front like that. And we're going to use our mini dimensionals. It's so cute when everything coordinates so well, like the ribbon and the paper and the cardstock. And that's my favorite part about stamping up in the ink. It makes it look really put together. Right? Yeah. Yes, it does. And so now on this one, because the C kind of goes off the paper and meaning off of this, and it's this part is already raised, the part with the bird on it. I'm going to do a double dimensional, right? Because this is going to sit on something that already has dimensionals, and this is not. So you're going to need a double dimensional for that. And then I just did congratulations like that. Isn't he cute? And then we're going to cut our wild wheat ribbon. Do a small cut there. Slide that through. And then all we have to do is our inside. And yes, we have sayings for the inside, which I don't always do. I don't always show you because a lot of times I'll leave those blank till I know what I'm using them for. But this one I know I'm going to be using for a graduation card. So. Good. Cute, right? Now you can leave it like that or you can fray it like I did on this one. Um, depending on what look you like. All right, so we'll put that away. All right, and then we're gonna do our inside, which is just our usual four by five and a quarter inside. I'm using my stamp and seal plus to put that on. In that wonderful wild wheat, sorry about that. Um, and then we'll put some of this little mini dimensionals on that and then that'll be our inside and see how cute that is popped up I know you have a little saying inside and a little one outside I think that's a cute little card you know and you can change the face by how much white you leave on the face he almost looks a little more like an owl there, right? Cute card. All right, so that's card number one, one of our more simple cards. Okay, so we'll go on to card number two, 
which I hope you like. I made quite a few of these because I ended up liking it so much. So then I used it again. It's a versatile card that I um, used for thank yous and birthdays. But the original one I made, I just said so happy for you. So you could use it as an engagement card or, you know, a wedding card. So I'm going to take that out and show you that. All right. So with this one, it's a white on white. So we're going to be using with uh, the basic white thick paper. And we're going to cut that in hot dog style. <laughs> hot dog style or portrait style. So we cut it four and a quarter, score it five and a half. And then we line up the bottoms. And then we use our bone folder across. Good. My nice, the newest bone folder I have. Not as marked up as my other ones. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of, um, not that one, because that one is for our flowers. Um, this piece, which is cut just a little bit below, um, a quarter of an inch below. So this is cut at four by five and a quarter and we're going to run it through the embossing machine now the embossing folder i used here this is part of that online exclusive embossing folder pack um so um it has this one it comes with ones that have dots and another pattern uh, which are really cool they're all 3d um, so, and you can use any embossing pattern, that, I mean any embossing folder really with this design that I have. So if you avert your eyes for a second, if you have or get motion sickness, I'm going to bring you to our Stampin' Boss Cut Machine right here. Roop. Sorry. Now if you want to watch, so you put your folder in. The edge always facing into the machine so you don't get buckling or cracking. Then you only need plate one and plate four. And then you just run that right through there. Sorry about the shaking. Should probably have my phone mounted on not my shaky little desk, <laughs> but eventually I'll get the right setup. All right, avert your eyes again. And then we open up and we have this beautiful textured piece of white paper. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our new 2 and 3 8 circle punch. This is available in the catalog. It bundles with the circle saying set, um, which is cute. You can put all these in that circle. I love the seashell one. Circle saying. All right. I have a lot of the new sets right in front of me. It's very exciting. Very exciting times. And then I just realized my sister was like, well, you know, it's, it's almost June and July. You usually start your Christmas cards. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> and so I just did that, right? Good. That's all I did. I just picked a spot, made a hole in it. I wanted some more area over here than on this side. Okay. And... Now what I'm going to do is take this piece and I'm just going to put adhesive on the back of these um, with the dimensionals or you can use the adhesive strips. Um, a lot of times what I like to do is use the edges here. Yeah, so like you can just peel that off and put that in a corner. <laughs> peel this off. This can do a whole strip. All right. And the reason I'm doing this before stamping is because I want to make sure that I stamp my sentiment in the correct area, right? So you don't want to stamp it and then have your hole not cover it, right? So this is this is good use for your outside borders, right, of your dimensionals. And then some right around there to give it some lift. Probably just one more right there. Okay, 
and then we put this down and then we're gonna use oh misty moonlight we get to use misty moonlight again <laughs> isn't that nice oh i forgot before we put this down we need to remember to put our ribbon our beautiful moody mauve ribbon i have been seeing mauve all over the place i don't know if you guys have but i see it everywhere i <laughs> know even I posted, I was like, even in my mammogram, even when I went to get my mammogram, there was Moody Mauve. So um, we have Moody Mauve, which is, I just think, a gorgeous color. I know everyone's like, oh, it's 80s, but you know what? I, I don't care what decade it came in. It's pretty. <laughs> All right. So I have my Moody Mauve gorgeous ribbon, and then I'm just going to pop this up and give it some height okay and then that gives it some dimension with it still being white all right any questions on that and then we're going to take two colors in our beautiful trio one of them is misty moonlight and um, <laughs> we are going to take that saying and that saying again comes from the color and contour set that I use all the time and with that fabulous die set remember that die set I always talk about that die set that you can't live without if you don't have this by now I, I don't know if you'll ever get it <laughs> because I use it almost every class so I haven't influenced you by now um, but I still use it I, I use it all the time so I've inked up my ink and now I'm going to go right in the center of my circle. It's okay if you're a little off. If you feel like you're going to be off, go a little to the right than the left because that's where your flowers are going to be. And then you just put your ink down and you let it sit, soak into the paper. Don't rock anything. Lift up and there you go. And now you have your saying. And now you're going to build your flowers around there. So when I was making these, I decided to make a whole bunch of these. And so I had actually stamped flowers in different sizes with different colors and I was experimenting what colors I liked what colors of the leaves I liked and I encourage you to do that because you'll want to use different colors and everyone likes different colors um, but I settled on this which is and I'll show you how to do this um, this is boho and misty moonlight together and this one is bubble bath with the mauve color, moody mauve, right? And then we have different ones, like we can do that and that, and then a little one down here. You can change them up. This is actually stamped in granny apple green. And then you just kind of sort out where you want your flowers okay and your leaves and we have dyes for all these and so when you look at the set this goes down as a base this goes on top of it this is a base this is on top base top base top base top base top and then you have your leaves and your little baby's breath right there <laughs> okay um so this is a great and then you have the dyes all the dyes that cut out all the flowers and all the leaves and then you also have this is the one that has that great background one too so this is one of my favorite bundles that carried over from the spring catalog it's the two-tone flora okay so let me show you how to stamp one of those flowers and then we'll assemble this and then we'll go on to the most difficult card which is not terribly difficult. So I took, and I do encourage you to play. Play with them and see which one you like. But I would recommend that the base color be lighter than the define color or the outline color. And you're actually going to start with the base and then put the outline on top of it. Okay? So we have our... What's nice is now it says when you open it, it says the sticker can say Boho Blue, um, where this is an older pad, so it doesn't, right? Newer pad, Boho Blue, so you know that one's the Boho Blue. 
and we are going to take uh, our base one and I'll make sure it's clean um, and we're going to put that into the boho just make sure you get enough ink Ooh, but not too much it's a little bubbly so I've noticed that when um, you transport your ink sometimes if there's too much agitation they get bubbly it is a very versatile set I love it so you don't want it too bubbly but we'll see how it works out it might be too much ink on here and so you just hold in down on your ink pad okay and there's your floral okay so that's just the base color and now we're going to come in with our darker misty moonlight and this is where it's harder to do on camera but you line it up and so what you're lining up are these definitions and usually they're next to the white spots so I usually start here where that part is and then I lay that down uh, man that looks good there and I'm a little off so I'm off there okay but it still looks good, right? Still looks really good. So let me do that one more time. I might, you might see my head on camera. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do this. Let that soak in. And then we're gonna do our misty, our misty moonlight, right at that break right there. I'm gonna off camera. It's hard to do off with the camera right over where you're going to look. That looks better. Yeah. Now, can you see how that looks? That's no, that is gorgeous. So that's perfect. That is all, but you could still use that flower. But can you see how that highlights the area? And it's easy to do just not when you have a camera in your face. Um, so I, what I do is I line up this line and that line right there, and then I stamp it right over, and it just makes the highlights and everything in that flower look good. And then there's a die that cuts it right out. And then I used Granny Apple Green for the leaves. So you can cut those out. And what I did is I did a whole sheet of them and then I just cut them out because <laughs> it was easier just to keep lining them up and then cutting them out. And I made a whole bunch all at once. Um, Karen knows she was there. <laughs> all right. And then, so the first thing I did is I took one of my leaves and I wanted it raised up some. So I put... Um, a dimensional there and some little mini dimensionals here. Mini dimensionals are always good to have. And remember, we have both white and black. So when you're using black paper, like I did in that sample I showed you, um, which we'll probably be doing next week, I'm hoping. I'm hopeful. And then I'm going to lay that like right there. Cause, so you want to make a shadow over the circle. Okay. And then we will take this one and we'll put some dimensionals on this. And I'm going to leave this edge a little bit open so I can tuck other flowers underneath. Okay, and so that one I'm going to put meh, right there. Yeah, you can put them wherever you want. There's no rhyme or reason. You could use more than the colors I'm using. You could use yellows in here and all kinds of stuff. You don't have to. There's. This is something I just made up, so <laughs> there's no rules. Change it however you want it. And I just did it there. And then we'll do... And this actually used different flowers than the ones I used. And this is a smaller flower. We'll put that one kind of there and don't you love the bu bubble bath color yeah I'm getting a lot of happy faces <laughs> who's sending me all those happy faces and then you just put that one up there and tilt it however you want it's so easy 
this is not a hard card, but it looks beautiful. And like I said, you can change this to happy birthday, congratulations, thank you, um, whatever you want it to be, it can be. And now I have my two little leaves to stick in. And again, I need my dimensionals. And it's not hard to do. And then, I mean, you could have used blue ribbon. You can use a blue background instead of the white on white. I kind of like the white on white. It makes it a little, a little classy, you know, a little classier. The thing you got to be careful of is that you don't want your leaves to go over the edge of the card. And so because I did this one a little different, I'm going to put the leaves up there. So yeah, you want to make sure they don't hit that edge because they won't fit in your envelope. And then we'll put some down underneath here. And then all we have is a little embellishments and we're all done. And so if you can imagine, this layout could be used for a lot of things. So say you had, um, could be used for any flower set, right? Any flower set. Um, um, but um, it could be used for daisies. But if you had an ocean set, like make the ocean background, put a circle in there with a the saying and put the, you know, the seaweed around it. This layout could be used for a lot of different things. All right. Imagination is never ending. So this is the red and green adhesive back um, pearl set that was in the Christmas catalog, but carried over. Uh, you can tell I've already used all the gold except for one. Um, the silver I've used a lot of. These are the ones that are kind of the soft succulent color, but we'll probably go with Lost Lagoon. And these are red. And these are just really good to have. Not just in general. Um, not I use these all the time, not just for Christmas. Um, but see how pretty they are. They just look pretty. So I'm using my pick tool. And you can put them wherever you want. Um... I like putting them on the leaves sometimes because kind of maybe like dew on the leaves. <laughs> um, yeah. And then a couple up there. And usually you want to end up with an odd number. Maybe there. So one, two, three, four, five is probably good. All right. And then there you have your card. All right, and so, and that's a little different than this card, but not much. Depends. On, I almost like the pink better up there than too much blue. Um, but you can make them any way you want. All right, so that is card number two, and now we are on to card number three, our last and final card, but card that's a little bit tricky. <laughs> I almost didn't do this one because I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up in front of you, but God hates a coward, right? <laughs> um, and so playing with cards, trying things, that always works. So this is where we're using that fabulous new six pack of paper and we're going to make this card with the fringe. The fringe is so easy to make. I just thought it was a great birthday, bright birthday card, and I loved Berry Burst and Lemon Lime Twist, and we're going to use Bubble Bath and Pretty Peacock, and all these bright colors are in here, okay? Great, so that's our card, and now I'm going to show you how to do it, how to use it, <laughs> how to make it. All right, so let's get this stamp, oh, I didn't get my stamps in my box out for this one. I was that scared of doing it. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of Berry Burst. Yep, Berry Burst, one of our new core colors that came back to us that goes so well with Lucky, or not Lucky Limeade, that is a retired color, Lemon Lime Twist. Look at that Berry Burst nice bright pink. I'm loving that we have bright colors and muted colors. We have a variety of colors now. I'm just, I'm very happy with our selection. 
And now we're going to take, see that lemon lime twist? This is how I started. I'm like, I know I like these two cards together. Okay. And I'm going to do, what I'm going to do first is to cut out the die that is from this set, the beautiful balloons. I just saw a really cool card with just lucky limeade and black using different, just different balloons on it. But you have all these different things that you can do. Okay. And so I'm going to take the die. All right. And we're going to put that right there. Good. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now we're going to run that through the big shot. Okay. Not a big shot. It's not called a big shot anymore, right, guys? It's called Stamp and Boss Cut Machine. Stamp and Boss Cut Machine. And I got pretty peacock plates. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Pretty cute peacock plates. Um, I can't wait to show you the guys the cards for next week, too. I have two, I have three cards made. Um, not sure if I'm going to use all three or if I'm going to change one of the easy ones. I like to do an easy one to show you. It's possible to make really pretty easy cards. And I like to show you some that take a little bit of judge. <laughs> all right, so we just run that through there. Nice, easy peasy. And then it gives us this cutout for three balloons, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I got a sticky. I got a gluey sticky on there. So we get this cut out for three balloons. Now hold on to this because you can use that some other time, right? Put it in your cup. <laughs> Put it in your cup. And now you're like, okay. But now I have berry burst behind there. And you could use it like that. But what I did is I took a piece of white. Basic white that is smaller than that. Now I need to find my package of... Here it is. <laughs> My package of supplies. Um, so I have a white for the inside and white that's smaller. So this is slightly smaller than four by five. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that like that. I'm going to put adhesive on it. I know it sounds strange. I'm going to stamp on something after it's been adhesed to the cardstock. And that's where you're taking a chance, okay? So, now I'm gonna make sure that none of the edges show. And then I'm gonna put this where I would normally line up the lemon lime twist, all right? Good, not bad, right? And so if I move this, no white shows, right? No white shows on the edges. So I'm going to keep that there. This is where it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take my stamp set. And I'm going to take this big balloon. Because this big balloon is going to fit right there. And yes, the... If you use something like Berry Burst, it is going to color your stamps. Anything red is going to color your stamps, but that's okay. They still work fine, just fine. And Berry Burst is an older pad. I should probably buy a newer one. But it works fine. And then if you doubt it, you can, you know, stamp it over here. Okay, let's ink that up real good all right Ooh, risky right so our white is tacked down so all I have to do is understand where I'm going okay and I'm gonna go right there so I am going to ooh, this is much harder with a video you're gonna see some of my head So I'm going to go right there, okay? And then I'm going to lift up. That didn't quite work, did it? It didn't quite work. <laughs> so now I'm going to 
Now I know where my white, where I want it. And then I'm going to line it up again. I'm lining up the stars and everything else. But at least you got where you wanted it, right? And there, now you got a better print. Now the other two are easier, much easier. <laughs> it was just that berry burst because you could, to make it easier on you, just cut all of them out. The other two we're going to cut out and pile on top of. So this is where you need a scrap piece of your white. But all there's different ways of doing this. All right, and now we're going to do a little pretty peacock one. And the reason I caught these colors is because this is the color that's in the designer series paper. Okay. And then we're going to take these two small dies right here, the two smaller balloons. Are those the right size? So if you don't know if they're the right size, make sure they fit. And those are the right ones. And then we're going to take the two that fit there. Okay. All right. So we have a middle pretty peacock balloon, which is so cute. Pretty peacock. How cute. Cute balloon, right? You could do such cute cards with just a bunch of these different colors all across. So many things you could do with this set. Everyone needs a good birthday set. You can do any colors, anything you want. All right, now we're going to use our new bubble bath. Bubble bath. Bubble bath. It is awesome. Now, bubble bath, you might get it and it might look splotchy a little bit, but it works great. Much better than the old berry burst. I should get a new pad, right? And then I'm just going to do a nice pink one there. Great. And so then we have our bubble bath. All right. Still with me? Still with me. <laughs> and then when I do these, this is where I use my highlighter tape, which is not a Stampin' Up! product, but I can tell you where to get it. Because you really need to make sure these cut out perfectly, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And now I need to find my highlighter tape. Oh, there it is, next to my other dimensionals. And it must be, it's still raining, it's still raining. What a weekend for it to rain. Okay, now I'm going to go back over here, boom, 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 boom. I hope your craft room is neater than mine, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Um, but I have so much to be playing with, it gets exciting. It's exciting, and I'm preparing for my big sale in a couple of weeks, and making sure everything is priced. Now, how cute is that little balloon? That little balloon's so cute. I would think about doing these in a bunch of different colors, or someone's favorite color palette, and building them up all into one bunch and a happy birthday on the bottom. That would be cool, right? Yeah, that would be cool. Now, I don't know how I did it. But on this one, I did get some on there. But I don't think it's going to matter much. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do um, is we are going to do, 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 do this. And then we're going to still line it up. Oh, if I was picky, I would take another piece of limeade cardstock and redo this. And that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, but you see how it lines up like that? So now all you have to do is take your dimensionals. And then 
this layers over this. Kind of like that. It doesn't have to be exact. And then you take your dimensionals for this one. I'm making it look harder than it is. Dimensionals. The big dimensionals. And there's many ways to do this. You don't have to do it this way. This way just makes it look harder. Because it is. There's other ways to skin a cat, right? And then you're going to kind of sneak that out so that we're going to do that, right? And because there's just a little bit of ink on here, I'm going to fix it by just chopping that little piece off. Cutting this little piece of ink off here. Because as long as you have the frame, it's okay if there's a little white. Okay? As long as the frame's on there. But you don't necessarily want this red to be on there. This berry burst. So I'm just cutting that off just a little bit. So it doesn't show that berry burst that I got on with my ink pad. And what you could also do is just stamp, which is the smarter thing to do. Um, which I didn't do this time, is just stamp the balloon first, then cut this out, and then match it up, and then cut. But there's a million ways, like I said, to skin a cat. Now, we have that. That looks so cute, right? Can you see that? Looks cute. Looks cute just like that. But now we're going to do some playing with the lemon lime twist piece. We're going to take a piece of that vellum, not vellum, acetate, that has the gold on it. But we're going to flip it over, because I like the silver better. And we're just going to hear it onto that, so that when we lay it over those, they go like that. So, um, you do want something strong, either glue dots or your stamp and seal plus on this part because you want that acetate to stick and we're just going around the edges here and you want to make sure you're doing the correct side because it's not symmetric right so we're doing that side good all right so now i'm going to put that there just so it all you got to do is make sure it covers all your holes it doesn't have to be straight right and so then we have that isn't that cute so far cute cute and now we get to the fun part. Uh -huh. This whole thing is fun. Like, look at that designer. You can use any of the designer paper. I use this um, piece because I liked the stars and the colors. So I'm going to add that right there. And so on this piece, I came down a little too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down a little farther. Um, okay. So I'm going to move that down a little farther, and then I'll cut off the edge. Okay. All right. So there's always ways to adjust. So if you put your dies a little down a little farther, then just put your paper down a little even farther than that. The reason I'm doing that is because I want an area to put my fringe on, and I want an area to um, put my ribbon on. So I'm going to cut this part off, okay? And you think it should have been straight. <laughs> but the fringe will help hide that. Fringe hides a manner of sins, right? A matter of sins. <laughs> Not a manner, but a matter. Right? Good. And so you can see how this is coming together. It's, I'm making it so much harder than it is. <laughs> But it's not hard. And we're almost done. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to emboss on this. Okay. And um, we're going to take this saying from the set that says, um, I think it's time for a celebration. And we're going to heat emboss right over here. Now, when you heat emboss with or when you're stamping Versamark on acetate, you once you put it down, don't put too much pressure or it can slide, it can slip. Okay, so you really wanna make sure you use your embossing buddy, get everything off so that the embossing buddy doesn't stick to anything, right? And then we're going to use our Versamark. 
because you can you can just stamp this on a piece of paper and then have a tag coming across but I thought it took away from the card if you did that so now we're just going to kind of put that right here and once you it's down don't move it okay don't let it slide don't put too much pressure on it so it slides okay like that see how I put that in it slid a little but it's okay so now we're going to take our white embossing powder And we're going to emboss it. Are you guys too close? Are we too close? <laughs> Maybe I need to back you up a little. All right. And then we say, hmm, did we even get any powder on there? Okay. Yeah, it didn't quite work. This is what I was afraid of. <laughs> um, the E didn't come out. So... Can you see how the E didn't come out? It's meant to be like that. So I think I was afraid of it sliding. So we're going to, I'm going to show you a fix. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that just so I don't have powder everywhere. I'm going to show you a fix. I thought this was going to work just as well as it did the first time. But you can see all the things that could potentially happen. <laughs> Especially when you're um, stamping on acetate, you got to be a little bit more cautious. Okay, but we'll do that and I'll show you how I'm going to fix it in a second. So now I decided that mm, maybe that doesn't really work for me. So I'm going to... Do you guys like it when I mess up and have to show you how to fix things? Because <laughs> I have to start thinking on the, on the fly. So I want to put a few towels um, on my balloons. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's see. Where are my towels? Tassels. So maybe put a tassel here and a tassel here. A tassel here. Maybe. Maybe just one. So let's stamp that with Versamel. I'm going to put that right there. And then at least you have a little bit more white stuff on there. A little bit more white. And that'll come through a little bit better. Won't be so blank. Let's see, you got a little tassel there, and we're going to heat that. Which is different from the original card. I didn't put any tassels on it. So you can do whatever you want. We're still working. We're still making this better. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't throw away. Don't give up on your cards. Because <laughs> that's still going to be cute, right? Yeah, it's still going to be cute. We're just going to fix that. Okay. So now... The coolest part and the easiest part is we have this die in this kit that cuts fringe. So what you do is you put a piece of paper from, you cut a piece of paper from the 6x6 that has all these colors. And then what you're going to do is you're going to run it through so part of it goes off the edge, okay? Because if you do this, then you're going to have to cut the edge, okay? So you want part of it to go off the edge. So all these are fringes. So let me show you that because this is just cool to do on its own. You could do the die set just for this one, right? Okay, so we're gonna have that so it just goes off the edges. Good, good. And of course it's gonna move because I told you this card. This is the one I was nervous about. <laughs> Nervous I was going to make it look harder than it is, but it isn't. It isn't that hard. And you can make a lot easier cards with this set. I just wanted to play a little bit more. And then there is your fringe. Isn't that cool? 
Oh, and there is your fringe. Isn't that cool? And so now what you're just going to do is you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to, you know, peel back your fringe and make it right. Do that. And then what you do is you decide, do I want the green side, the pink side? I like the pink side on there. And I'm going to put a strip of adhesive right there. And we're going to hear that down. Right? Very cute. And I'm a little off. So I apologize. I'm a little off kilter, I think. It's hard to see because all right and then we're going to cut this edge off we still have a really cute card <laughs> it's coming along and then we're going to take some of that new lemon lime trim put that right over that see how cute that is and put some adhesive there adhesive here good good great See, it's still coming together. Still coming together. And now we're going to put pop this up on here. Good. And then I'm going to show you how to fix that. All right. So we have pop-ups. So we need to pop this up. And this is, again, where you want to use... <laughs> You'll catch the end. <laughs> oh, you going to bed? Are you tired? <laughs> The ending is the best part to see how I fix things. <laughs> right? Because we all have boo boos. I have boo boos all the time. Boo boos, and then sometimes making a boo boo makes things look better. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other dimensionals? Oh, I got black ones in here. I just needed a few more, I think, to make it pop up. You really want to make it pop up around the balloons, right? So, all right. There's a couple ways we could fix that saying. If the first part of it's good we could just put a new celebrate and keep the but it looks kind of fuzzy all over now you can make this into a shaker card obviously it's you know designed for that so the first thing you want to do is line up the balloons before you put this on and they should be lined up pretty good there we go so we still have a cute card right see our cute card all right now all we have to do is put a little saying there. And what I think we'll do hmm, <laughs> is wait on what color? Blue, a teal, um, peacock. Peacock? Yeah. We are going to stamp that on peacock. And we're going to get it right this time. And if not, we'll do it over again. So use your embossing buddy. And we're going to stamp that on Peacock. So I think Peacock will be good. Yeah. Bring that color back in. All right. It doesn't have to be straight because we're going to cut it out. Now this is the time where you want those dyes that come in with that other set. <laughs> And then we're going to just emboss that. So anytime you mess up a saying, you can just layer another saying over it. <laughs> That's the easiest way to fix it. Now, if this was good, if it said, I think it's time for a, and the celebration was missing, I would just do the celebration. But I think um, this is messed up too, right here. So um, you could do either. 
Um, or you can just cut out, if you wanted to, the E that's missing, the EB from, you know, the E and put the E right there. So there's all different things you could do to fix it. Um, but I think this is the best way. And I usually do have a paintbrush that I don't use for painting, that I use for removing powder before I heat emboss. All right. Joanne's the only one with me. She's the only hardcore. <laughs> Karen had had to go. <laughs> All right. And so we'll heat that. Because acetate does get slippery, and you already did all that work, and you don't want to redo the card, so this is this is good. So we have this nice crisp saying, which is good. And now we're going to fussy cut it out. So no dyes or anything, but just fussy cut. All right. And we're going to leave a little border. You always leave a little border. If you leave a little border, it makes it look good, better than if it's just right up against it, okay? And you're going to move the paper, not the scissors. Am I right in your face? Or am I too close? I feel like I'm too close today. And then when there's scripty words, you want to get a little, you want to move up and down a little bit with it to give the appearance that you're going up and down around the letters but you don't really have to go that deep into the letters okay just don't leave any sharp corners and so now we have a little saying that i think looks pretty good the white on the teal and now we're just gonna it might even make this card look better yeah i think it makes the card look better and we're just gonna pop it right on that <laughs> do you think it makes the card look better I like it better with the teal than just the white. I think it pops better. See, mistakes happen for a reason. And so I'm just putting dimensionals on this. Yeah, you like the teal better, don't you? The pretty peacock, I should say. Teal. So you just put some dimensionals on this. And then you put it right over where you were going to put that. And blah, there it is. So we're not done yet. But that makes it look good, right? I think. So you can compare the two. There's that one, and then there's that one. I think that stands out more. If I got it, if I get it straight, it's a little off. But you can move it a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I like that better. I do, I do. And now we're gonna use some sequins. So I put a tail. The difference is I put a tail on that balloon. I think I like the tail better. Um, and I think I like it better on there. I think I might go ahead and do that on the next one. And now I'm probably going to place these differently. So these are the sequins I was talking about. I'm going to probably place one right, maybe a smaller one right there. Right there. Cute, right? That one's better. Which one do you like? One or two? Kind of like two. <laughs> brings it, the, it brings the saying to the forefront where the saying gets a little bit lost in this one. I think this one looks better. And this one, I put the ribbon down a little bit further on the fringe. This one, I left it right at the border so you could do either. Um, I might like it at the border better, but it's cute. All right. All right. That was a struggle for me, <laughs> but it's, it's not a hard card to do. I just, I just messed up. That's all. But you see how easy it is to fix, how easy it is to fix things. Yep. Just do the same thing right over it, stamp, push it on there. And this we can move up if we want it right on the border. I think it looks better on the border. Oh, I think I like the, I think I like the newer one. All right. Well, this step, uh, this stamp set though is just so cute. This bundle is cute with the colors. Um, so if you think about 
birthdays and things like that. This is great. All right. Hope you enjoyed tonight. Um, shows you no one's perfect in stamping, but we all have fun using crafting. And if there's anything that I can do for you, you let me know. Otherwise, have a good week. Have a blessed tomorrow. And um, stay safe and healthy. And get some stamping in. Get some stamping in. The weekend, the weather's not so good this weekend. Enjoy. Thanks, Joanne. Have a good night.